In the previous video, we have ensured that our generation is multi-threaded so we can easily interact with our editor as well as inside our game when we are moving, we do not get those frame rate drops when we are loading new chunks, we can easily interact with our environment. But there is one issue. Let me show you. If we try to press play, and then if we try to regenerate the world, and then we want to stop because of something happened, then there is a chance that we are going to have this error because our task was still running in the background, it returned the result, but there is no world object uh, to interact with. So we need to prevent our tasks from running when we disable our editor, when we stop our game. And this is where uh, the Unity job system shines, it takes care of it. In our custom solution, we need to take care of it uh, on our own. Before we start, I just want to let you know that I have created a new website called sunnyvalleystudio.com where you can find the tutorials uh, from YouTube, but also some blog posts that I have recently created about the 2D games and I will keep on creating new ones. And you can access my video courses and currently I have four of those, so you can check out if anything suits you and can help you uh, progress in your game dev journey and my make a 2d platformer course using the design patterns is currently in early access and you can get it with a 30 or i think 40 percent discount and this is in early access i am still uploading for it a uh, new videos and by purchasing it you'll help me a lot to create more free tutorials and videos the link to both of those will be in the description okay let's get going with this video let's go to our world script great right. now here we were starting those tasks so here was the generate world method and it was awaiting those methods to return the data and those tasks were responsible for returning us the result now we can stop those tasks manually to do this we need a special uh, field uh, added here at the top so this is called task cancellation and we will need to have a, a cancellation token in our class to cancel our tasks and basically this allows us to stop the task from performing as well as to ensure that this task will never be scheduled to run if we stop our game early and if it is running already it will basically automatically prevent this task from running anymore and overall it will do a lot of work for us but what we will need to do is have this cancellation token source take from this cancellation token source a token which is a cancellation token type and then we need to do two things first pass to the tasks.run the token source the token so this is our token and this part will ensure that our uh, system will do its job to stop this task but for us, if we want to stop the work that we perform in our task, we need to do this on our own. So we need to create some if statement. If the cancellation was requested, then we will want to simply throw an exception, for example, and then surround our call to the task in a try catch block. Okay, let's get back to our project. Okay, then we will need to create cancellation token source and right now we need to right cl uh, click on this quick actions and we will be using system.threading library let's call it a uh, token or task token task token source equals new cancellation token source so this will be our task token source that we will use to stop our tasks now the most important thing is that this class, if we go to the definition, has this uh, cancel method and uh, we can access the token itself, which is simply a struct. If we go to the definition, it contains some parameters, but basically what we will want to do is we will want to check uh, is cancellation requested, full flag. If this is true, then it means that we want to cancel our task. So back in our world script, when we stop our editor uh, at the end, our program will call on uh, destroy and on disable. So what we can do is create a public on 
uh, disable public void on disable and then uh, when we click stop in the in inspector or we stop our game this will be called so we can call task uh, token source dot cancel and this will cancel our task token source or uh, set the, the token value to be is cancellation requested to be true so now all we need to do is ensure that when we call our await and we wait for our task then we can pass our cancellation token so for example in our generate world when we return a task and this is an async method we call word generation data await task.run and we can pass to it as a second parameter after this lambda expression we can pass the cancellation token source which now which in our case we have named our to task token source so task token source dot token now the problem we have here is that get positions that player sees if we go to the definition uh, is not uh, calling a task itself so we have two options either we can check after each of those methods or pass to each of those methods the same token and inside this method for example we can check in this for each loop if a token that is cancellation requested then we could break from this method or, or throw an exception now since this is a pretty uh, fast method and this all this whole process doesn't take very long we are going to ignore this but of course you can stop this as well uh, it would only require you to pass the same token and do it a manual if else check so this is pretty fast so we do not have to worry about this but later on when we are going to call this calculate world chunk data here we could have an issue as well as the second method create mesh data async so what we can do is we can call this concurrent dictionary here equals null and then we can call this dictionary to be equal to the await so the result of our uh, calculate world chunk data method that is asynchronous now we need to create try and we have the snippet tab tab two times and we have this try catch statement so we are going to put this data dictionary equals await a line of code inside the try catch block and this will simply catch any exception that our task might throw so the idea is that when we want to cancel our task we are going to simply throw an exception and this try catch block will ch catch this exception and what we could do is we could uh, simply actually we are not going to catch any exception we are going to simply return so we want to stop the process and we are going to call debug dot log and we are going to log task cancelled okay and right now we can copy this try catch statement and we can slide it down when we are creating our data let's paste it and we can cut out this line and paste it instead of our data dictionary we are going to set mesh data dictionary to, and we are going to surround it in the try catch statement again if we are at this point and we want to stop the game then we are going to again return and debug.log this task cancelled message so last thing that we will need to do is actually modify those two methods to take into account this uh, task cancellation uh, cancellation token source and the token behind it now the uh, one issue that you might encounter is that if this method is called from another class then you would have to pass this token as a parameter of this method since our methods are in the same class we can simply go to the definition of this one method and we have the uh, access to this uh, task token source so what we can do is we can first pass to this task.run as the second parameter after the lambda expression task to uh, task uh, token source dot token so this will ensure that the system will automatically stop uh, scheduling our task uh, when we cancel our when we stop our game when we call a uh, token to cancel but of course we need to apply some manual stop when we are in this for each loop so at the start of our for each loop we can add if task uh, token source dot token is cancellation requested and this is the same what we would do in the first method that we have skipped so 
This now checks if the cancellation was requested. If it is, we are going to call our task token source the token dot throw if cancellation requested. Now, of course, if we have some resources that we want to clean up or memory we want to free, we would do it here. But we do not have anything like this, so all we need to do is we need to call this. And actually, we can copy this statement, this if statement, because now we need to go back to our top of the class where we have our generate world. And we have handled this calculate world chunk data. The last method that is asynchronous and that we need to take into account is this mesh data dictionary equals await create mesh data async. Let's uh, select it, and actually, I have it underneath my uh, generate world method. So I'll go to it. And again, first thing that I need to do is pass task token source dot token as the second parameter of this run method. So here is the lambda expression, and the second parameter is our token. And in this for each loop, I'm going to paste, basically paste the same if statement, the if check, if the token, uh, if the cancellation is requested, then we are going to throw an exception. And this exception, again, will be uh, catched by this try catch block. It will handle this by calling debug.log task cancelled and it will return. So let's save it. I actually, select file and save all just in case. And let's go back to our project. Great. So we can clear the console, and if everything went well, we can press play. Now we may press regenerate, and then stop our editor. And as you can see, our debug uh, .log logged task cancelled. So we can be sure that now no task is running in the background while we, while we have stopped our uh, inspector from playing the game. So as you can see, this is a bit of work that we need to do to ensure that our async operation using the task library works, or task class works. And this is one uh, of the reasons why you might consider using the job system for, uh, from Unity for a simple task, uh, instead of using the task library from the C-sharp language. But this is a way that we can uh, create this kind of behavior. Uh, using the task library, we can uh, cancel those, and we can still regenerate our world and we will be able to move around. And of course, if we are going to try to stop our game when we are moving around, of course, this is pretty difficult because I am using my mouse to uh, rotate around. We can simply stop the game. And since no task was running, this generate world method was not running. I haven't received any debug.log statement. But basically, this should also work inside your game. Great! In the next video, I will want to refactor our uh, creation of the chunk because right now, when we are moving around, okay, we are in the game and I have selected this one chunk at the edge. When we are moving around our map, of course, we are going to unload this chunk and then we, when we go back in this direction, we are going to create a new chunk and this chunk will still be deactivated. So there is no point in creating a new chunk. Uh, in a place or where the old chunk is already existing because we can reuse it instead of generating a new chunk. So this is what I want to do. I want to refactor our world, world and split it into two classes, a world renderer uh, and the world, and the world renderer will be responsible for reusing the old chunk. So we are going to basically create the object pool for it. Okay, see you in the next video.